Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cobas Live on Thursday. We've got a very special show today. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the person that we're that we're going to be featuring today, and but we're not only going to be featuring Patricia Barber, which is just all in itself uh, would be uh, uh, an, an easy hour, uh, an easy hour for us. Uh, we're also going to be having um, personnel from uh, that that helped her put this thing together. Uh, Jim uh, Anderson and Ulrike, uh, Ulrika Shores uh, were the technical uh, minds behind this album, and we're going to be having those those folks on as well, as well as A.B. Fawn, who's from uh, Impact Records and uh, the one who's distributing the album. Uh, all very interesting people. And as we were talking over the, over the last week or so, um, it, it it occurred to me that uh, that I could do an hour with any, every any one of these folks uh, just just by themselves. So it's going to be kind of a packed show. So we'll we'll be trying to cover as much stuff as possible and talking about this wonderful album that Patricia just did called Click, uh, and it is just an absolute like if you're familiar with Patricia Barber's albums in general, you'll you won't find it surprising that uh, that this album sounds absolutely amazing. So uh, we're, we're really lucky to uh, to have it. We finally got it. We were actually one of the last folks to get the get the album um, with the different streaming services, but we actually got it in um, 24176 and it just sounds absolutely wonderful. Um, it's it's really great when you can have a uh, uh, an album uh, with 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 team members involved in this thing that all sort of get together and decide this is going to be an incredible album, and uh, they 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 do their magic and and it actually is an incredible album. So I hope you enjoy uh, Click on Cobuzz. Uh, before we, st <laughs> I think. Nita and I are, are, are doing this together. Before we start, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Cobuzz, just just in case there are a few folks out out here that uh, that have not uh, experienced it. We would love you to. So we are a, a streaming service, and we do high resolution tracks all the way up to 24192. Um, if you're old like me, you remember when we used to buy these kinds of albums for. 20 30 40 50 dollars a piece i've got a whole bunch of them in my collection well now you can stream uh most anything there are a few things that you can't stream but um but most er most stuff is just available out there and uh if it's been recorded in high resolution we are going to have it um let's talk about what it takes to get into cobus it's cheaper now than ever we just had a pretty big cost decrease. We didn't really talk about it a lot, uh, but these days you can get into Cobuzz for about 11 bucks a month. Um, if you're paying by the a month, it's 13 uh, Or if you're a big downloader, which we hope you all are because our artists need the support, go buy the album. Go buy something uh, from... Uh, uh, from your favorite artist, uh, streaming doesn't really pay a whole lot at all, as you all know. Um, so we have a way to help subsidize that. Um, this is one of the things I'm the most proud of about Cobuzz. So go listen to Patricia's album. That That's great. But then go buy it. She could use the help. I would really appreciate it. And I know that she would as well. If you're a Sublime member, you can get these downloads like crazy cheap. Uh, like right now, you can get uh, Patricia's album. If you're just a human being, you don't even have to be a member of Cobuzz. You could go to Cobuzz.com and buy her album in 24176 for $19.99. Uh, 
which is a great price just in itself. However, if you do pay a little extra to Cobuzz, then you can uh, buy this album for, for $15. And if you are a downloader, if you are interested in supporting your artists, this is just an absolute wonderful way to do it. And if you buy like, I think it's like three downloads, um, you've already paid for the cost of your, uh, you've already paid for the cost of your uh, subscription. Uh, we also have a family price. The family prices are pretty good too. Um, you can get those for as low as uh, about $17, a, uh, about $17 a month for, for six people. Uh, and then if you're, if whole family is a spine member, then anyone anyone can download. Uh, but if not, everyone in your family can enjoy uh, Cobus for about seventeen dollars a month. I, before we get to our guests, I do want to let you know that we've got a giveaway. We're going to be giving away two of these uh, um, five point one uh, Super Audio CDs. Uh, they're hybrid, so they've got all of the different tracks on them. Um, high res, I've got a 5.1 multi channel uh, stereo. And plus, well, if you win this prize, we're going to give you six months of uh, Cobus for free. So that is that. Um, my first, uh, let me get this black screen off. The first. Folk, the first person I'm going to bring on is actually the engineer and co-producer of Click. His name is Jim Anderson, and Jim is a pretty fascinating guy, as you'll see, with quite an incredible background. Uh, let's let's bring Jim on now and say hi. Hi, David. How are you? Good, Jim. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. No, oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Well, wow, you've got you've just got quite uh, you've got quite a history behind you, Jim. <laughs> well, you know, I always say if if you've done it long as long as I have, you should have something to to talk about. Well, you, Jim has got a. Uh, in fact, I just put this on Streaming Music Matters. Um, I think it was yesterday. Jim gave me a playlist of all of the albums, or, or not all of, but a lot of the albums that he's been involved with, and help co-produce and help mix and and these kinds of things. I started listening to it yesterday and had a, the confession to Jim a little while ago. I said, you know, I just didn't, I didn't get all the way through it. And he's going, well, Dave, it's like five hours long, so <laughs> this is something for me to listen to, uh, uh, you know, in just in just a little bit. So, Jim, um, before we get into uh, Patricia's new album, which you did an just an incredible job on. Oh, thank you. Like always, though, I, like I was telling Patricia, I was talking to Patricia yesterday, and I'm going, it was no surprise. I mean, it just was. And I was expect had it not sounded lush and fat and beautiful and like an old friend, right? Just the, on first listen, um, I would have been super, super surprised. But it was that that quality of a recording, and it just sounded incredible. How did you guys do this? Well, you know, every record that we've done, um, uh, going back to the beginning, um, I've always tried to kind of look around and see what is the state of the art at the moment and try to put it in uh, in use for the recording at the time. So if you go back to like Cafe Blue, that was a full 16-bit converter when people really weren't using full 16-bit converters. Uh, and, uh, and the Otari digital uh, recording system and all that. And then when we came to this new one, uh, when we came to hire and to click, uh, I said to my wife, I said, what, you know, what is it that we can do? She's, we, she's been working with Pyramix and merging technologies and working in high resolution. And uh, we thought, you know, it, it's really the first time that uh, kind of Pyramix and um, uh, high resolution has been really used in a studio situation. It's been used in classical recording quite a bit and location. But, uh, you know, the problem is you, you, you want to be able to maybe do a little punch in, do a little fix, do a little thing right here and there. And what, um, uh, what we did was we didn't change anything on Patricia's part. I mean, for her, it was the same recording system we always used. But what we did was we actually teamed it up with the emerging technologies and, uh, and had them synced. So that when I would go into record on, on Pro Tools, the emerging technologies and Pyramix would actually kick in at the same time. And but in the back, Ulrika had built this special computer, a gaming computer, 
uh, because we didn't want to go carrying around a huge refrigerator full of, com of computers on the plane and all that kind of thing. Uh, so she built a gaming computer that could actually record 64 channels of DXD. <laughs> and uh, and it's it's pretty crazy. So sitting in the back was her with a with the laptop, recording exactly what I'm doing up front. And, uh, and so when we went out to Skywalker to mix, that's what we used. We you know we had the Pro Tools as a backup just in case. But uh, but once we opened up the faders and we heard the tracks on the board, we just couldn't believe it. You know, and and the one nice thing was we found that. Uh, uh, because of working in this super high resolution, we actually could do less processing uh, on the on the voice and the instruments and all that kind of thing. So there's almost virtually no EQ, no compression, uh, anything in this record. It's it's really just a, a, a good recording and a good mix and and a great performance too. Uh, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't disagree with uh, with any of that. And I definitely in just a few minutes or just a minute or so. We're going to bring uh, Ulrika on because she really is uh, the other 50% of the team. Mm -hmm. um, you, you really have to have someone that really knows what they're doing to try to get uh, as an, I, I guess, I can't even believe that, that, that she's an assistant <laughs> or that she's called an assistant with everything that she does. But uh, she's got quite a background as well. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, as well. So besides this kind of thing, you also, uh, you, you teach. I do. I teach at the, at NYU. It's a Tisch School of the Arts. It's the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music. Um, I, I um, uh, and another professor, we started this program back in 2003. Uh -huh. And it really kind of, it was off and running almost from the very beginning. And uh, so I was chair of the program until 2008. And so you had a lot. You had a lot of people that were already interested in the subject before you ever started. Then we. It was funny. I mean, um, uh, Clive Davis wanted to start a program that didn't just bring out engineers. It didn't just bring out music uh, 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 musicians, or just didn't bring out music business people. He wanted right. really a much more holistic approach, and so that's what we we developed, and we've developed over the la about the last twenty years. And uh, so we've had some very nice uh, successes and, and people that work in all facets of the industry and people, people that are in management, people that are in promotion, people that are artists, people that are um, uh, mixing music uh, for television and all that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, we've got we are uh, we're becoming um, uh, ubiquitous in the industry. So, yeah. And the name of the course, was, I felt was I thought was really interesting as well. Um, oh, my, uh, I teach a couple of courses, uh, but uh, I teach a critical listening course in the spring um, and, and it's for freshmen. And we do it in the spring because we know if I was to start doing that for a, for a fall freshman first, they walk in, their heads would explode. Um, and uh, so uh, the course I just got done teaching about an hour and a half ago uh, is actually a critical listening course, but it's in surround. And uh, and so we were t today we were listening to uh, uh, a, a surround mix of Poker Face and we listened to Beyonce, uh, uh, the, the track Blow. And at the same time, we listened to some stuff from 2L. Um, and uh, so it's a great mixture of material that I get to play. Wow, that's great. That 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 that's fantastic. And do you, do you have and, and I know you said you have a number of different kinds of people that that attend this. Do you? Do you have? Do you often have engineers join you as well? Oh yeah. Um, you mean uh, people that graduate? Um, uh, I can very, very specifically. Mike Witzer, who's a wonderful music mixer for Seth Meyers. Uh, oh, yeah. He's the music mixer. He's one of my graduates. And, oh, fantastic! Uh, and uh, Cecile Turnisak is um, a film music editor. And she did uh, Rocket Man, and she did uh, the uh, music for. Uh, 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 Mission Impossible Five, I think, something like that. Wow. And so she's uh, she's in Paris working, and uh, and both Mike and Cecile were were two of my best ear training students, and, and that goes back about ten, twelve years ago. Uh, and so they've gone on to do very nicely. There's a few engineers out there that that this is so important to that they feel mm -hmm. like it's just incumbent on them to share their knowledge. And, I, and I'm so thankful because there's a lot of engineers that don't get to get that perspective, the, 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 the perspective of the way things are supposed to sound and the way you actually get them to, 
to, to sound that way. Well, I can tell you, you know, the one thing that we have a wonderful production faculty, faculty engineering faculty here, um, and everybody has their own little specialty. Nick Sansano is, uh, you know, kind of old school hip hop, and Bob Power is just down the hall. You know, he did um, uh, some uh, some outrageous, uh, beautiful pop stuff, um, and uh, so, and then I'm the guy that does the acoustic material. So everybody has their specialty here, and and we're all. Kevin Killen uh, works with us too. Um, Kevin did uh, Peter Gabriel and all that kind of thing. So we've got this crazy, crazy good staff here. Well, that that that's awesome. And you've got you've got one part of your staff that's probably a little more uh, close. You guys probably work a little more closely than the rest of your staff. Mm -hmm. Simply, if nothing else, because you guys can discuss things at dinner, right? Oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to uh, I'd like to introduce everyone to uh, a very important, if the, not the most important, member of the uh, Anderson Audio Group in New York. She is a uh, co-owner and uh, has received multiple degrees uh, in sound. Uh, I think they called her in in uh, in Europe in Germany. I believe the. Uh, the degree was a tone meister. And I'm thinking tone meister, that, that sounds so cool. And I had to actually look it up and, and <laughs> see what that meant. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been a sound man my whole life, but I couldn't, I would never, I don't have the kind of credentials that uh, Ulrika has <laughs> as a tone master. And we're going to bring her on and let her tell us a little bit about that and then what she does with you. Hello. Hello. How, How are, are you? you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you. I very much enjoyed our conversation the other day and wow what you're 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 fascinating um I, I love the uh the idea that you built the computer to to actually record on that's 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 pretty impressive but before before that was impressive tone meister <laughs> well tell, that's a, tell it's, us it's, about it's, that because that's fairly <laughs> that's that's an in-depth thing Yes, uh, it, it it's uh, basically the the training as a classical music producer, which in, you have to play um, your main instrument on 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 almost soloist level, and then you do courses at the in my case at the Technical University of Berlin to do acoustics and these kinds of things, and then you get a full training in in um, on, um, at the music university and in score reading, ear training, and all these kind of things. Yes. But the interesting part is um, when I was introduced or when I found out that this job exists, I thought I wanted to be the producer and I wanted to to sit there with the score and tell everybody what to do. And when I when I really studied it, I, I, I noticed that the person on the board that was actually I thought in classical music, the more interesting job, because that's where you shape the sound and where you actually do um do things so I, I got a job afterwards I was basically hired by um, by this uh, radio network to do um, first to do TV and then uh, to do to work with their symphony orchestra so I, I traveled the world a little bit with the symphony orchestra but I also did things like uh, Olympic Games I was at the Olympic Games I traveled with the Pope and and did all kinds of I I met Angela Merkel and all, all these kind of things because because of being um, a staff engineer at at a very big um, broadcasting network, so so all of this came together. <laughs> I think you are muted. And you got I was sorry I didn't want to have the background noise here, but you guys also uh, work with another fairly famous uh, engineer, mastering engineer Bob Ludwig, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys were talking about him a good bit uh, uh, when we were when we were doing our pre-interview. Uh, that's kind of a neat guy to have on your team, huh? Yes, yes, he's a he's he's a good asset to have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, both of you guys, it's like I say, it's it's a it's a team effort, right? Nobody does this by themselves, especially something with this kind of production and this kind of sound quality. It's 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 really it's really incredible. Um, so yeah, if you haven't listened to it, listen to it, and remember that we're giving away. Uh, uh, one of the discs that are a multi-disc is 5.1 disc. So uh, 
make sure to engage and let us know you're here. And we're going to pick folks at random. We've got Neetha Viraporn who's doing our production and she's going to be uh, choosing a winner of these with the two uh, discs that we're giving away. We're also giving away six months free Coba. So be sure to uh, let us know you're here, say hi. And uh, some lucky person's going to, going to win this. And then if you win it, what I want you to do is I want you to write back on Streaming Music Matters and the Cobus Social. Let us know what you think. Uh, it, I, don't, I, think I think I already know what your review is going to be, but hey, let us know anyway. But so you guys just did an incredible job on this production. Uh, how long have you been working with Patricia? Um, I started with Patricia on an album called uh, Distortion of Love. Uh, oh. Brian, Brian Backus that was a uh, independent producer at the time. And uh, I remember walking down the street and Brian said to me, there's an artist that I think you would be perfect for. And he, um, uh, he told me about Patricia and he said, we're going to bring her to New York and we're going to record this record. And we worked at the, at the power station and did the first album. And, um, and it was also there, we, we had some technical glitches during that. Pat, Patty probably doesn't really remember about this, but um uh, we had so many technical glitches that uh, Power Station actually had to give us free time to mix the record. Um, so that was their make good. Um, and so when um, when uh, Patty started work recording for Premonition, uh, that was C Cafe Blue. I went out to Chicago, and that's uh, basically where we've recorded ever since at the Chicago Recording Company. And so it's been, what is it now, 15 albums I think we've done. Wow, that's in, that's incredible. So that the the very first album that was like what in that was early nineties, uh, early nineties or or maybe 89, 89, 90, something like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I know, I know. It was way back when I had. Uh, I remember when uh, the Patricia Barber album started coming out, mm -hmm. um, and I was actually uh, working in Hi Fi, and everybody had to buy that album. Ever everyone had to be playing that album. Mm -hmm. um, so we got a pretty good dose of, uh, of, of Patricia really throughout my, most of my career. Um, and she's certainly been a staple when you couldn't find things that sounded great. I mean, there are now that pe now that engineers are, are recording in higher resolution, there's the recordings are just better mm -hmm. over the last five years. I've, I've heard some of the best recordings I've ever heard in my life. Um, but, um, uh, I'm trying to think where I was going with that. At any rate, you guys did a, a, a wonderful job. And I think everyone listening and people that will listen uh, will, will, there's no way to disagree with that. It's well, just, David, David, I was going to tell you, you know, when we did Cafe Blue, I remember walking into the studio and somebody said, you know, what we really want this to sound like is to sound like uh, the Cassandra Wilson Blue Light Till Dawn. And I said, great, you know, we'll send an assistant out and buy it. They bought it. It sat on the console, and it never got unwrapped. <laughs> and 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 my feeling is that what we did at that moment was we created a new standard. So we didn't have to listen to that as our standard. I mean, I knew the record pretty well, and I I frankly don't I don't listen to other material when I'm in the studio because I really want to focus on what I'm doing. I, I don't want my ears to get kind of polluted and and uh, and. Uh, kind of get messed up listening to other material. I really want to focus on uh, on our thing. And uh, so, you know, it, it sort of all started with Cafe Blue, I think. Wow, that, that's uh, that's super interesting because um, Cassandra was another uh, jazz uh, uh, jazz singer that, that always had great sounding albums. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of her albums sound fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. I could see how that would have been considered like sort of a reference standard at that point. Mm -hmm. But that's really cool that you're going, okay, well, look, you know, there's a reference standard, but why don't we try to make a reference standard <laughs> on our own? Well, that, so, you know, the one thing that we had done on that recording that was what really made it stand aside is the fact that I realized the assistant, the Chicago Recording Com Company assistant, was getting bored. And I thought, what can I do to make him, give him something to do? And there's this wonderful stairwell in between uh, the first and second floor. And I said, what if we were to put a couple of speakers out there and put some microphones out? And let's create a live chamber. And he said, wow, that's a great idea. Yeah. And so for the next two hours, he's running cables and putting speakers out and amplifiers. And, you know, and he's puttering around. He's really happy. He's got something to do. And then we, we sent out the first signal. And all of a sudden, we had this crazy reverb. You know, that that's, you know, the original Cafe Blue had all this crazy reverb on it. It's a live staircase. And... Um, 
So when we went back and now this unmastered version, we went out to Capitol and worked with the Capitol Chambers and kind of cleaned it up a little bit. And uh, and so now when we work at Skywalker, we actually still build a live chamber. And so it's all, all the reverb is natural and acoustic and organic and everything. It's green. You know, we're not wasting any digits to create echo on these re records. It's really actual uh, a live a huge live chamber. And in surround, we actually build a, a quad. Uh, surround for that kind of thing. And for immersive, we build a cube. Yeah, we actually yeah. have four on four. Yeah. Uh, so in immersive, we actually have a, a, a height echo, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy. I was like 17, I think, and, and, and doing one of my very first recordings. And it was just like a, you know, a kid's band, but we had the singer uh, this was in a house mm -hmm. and around the corner from the studio was a, a bathroom, a porcelain mm -hmm. bathroom. And we had the singer go in there. We were using like a TAC 3340S or something. Right. And the singers back there in the bathroom, we couldn't see her, but she's singing and it's just all of this beautiful reverb, <laughs> which sounded a whole lot better than the echoplex that we had back in the sure. day. Yeah. So that's, boy, that, that's incredible. I, I, I love the innovation there, but that's kind of what you guys do. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you're you know, doing things that no other studio is doing in a lot of ways. Well, you know, I remember at the time when we did Cafe Blue, I said to the I said to the producer and the, the assistant, I said, I didn't fly a couple of thousand miles to Chicago just to make a record that sounded like every other record. I said, let me find out what's here that actually is unique. And, and part of the thing that's unique is there's some really great technical people out there. So a fellow by the name of John Hardy makes some wonderful mic pre's. And he lives in Chicago and, and he's also a fan of Patty's too. And so John gives us like 32 channels of class A mic pre and, and we burn them in for him. And so we have a whole rack of pre's that just all they are, are the microphone goes into the pre and the pre goes to right to the recording. It's as straight a piece of wire as we can make. And then uh, Michael Griffin came down from, from Detroit and brought us a, a box of $30,000 worth of uh, AC cables. And we re-cabled the entire place. Every, every AC was this uh, music cord from uh, essential sound products. And so uh, we really went crazy with technical stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's cool. It, it's amazing. It's amazing how that kind of a small detail can make it can even make a difference. If you went to school as a double E, uh, you come out of that course going, there is no difference. Uh, I, mean, I mean, really, that's yep. just what those those books teach you. And until you actually have that experience uh, of listening to something that you really it's it is kind of it's hard to explain mm -hmm. uh, because I'm honestly I'm not not even sure. But I do know when I've got better cables on my system, they sound better. But that has got to be like one of the biggest fights. I mean, I'm talking about knock down, drag out fights on the internet that you could ever. So I, I never even, I never even broke the subject because I'm not a fighter. <laughs> it's just not worth it. It's like, okay, I'll plug these things into my system and I'll enjoy it, but I really won't talk about it a whole lot. But it's really neat that you guys are, have gotten into the to, so deep that we can start talking about cables and recording and a high resolution. I had to ask you the other day and I'm taking like way, way too much time in this segment, but I'd ask you the other day as an engineer, both of you uh, guys and um, Ulrika, I think maybe this would be for you. Uh, what difference do you find recording in 1644 as opposed to high res or ultra high res? Like these guys re re uh, uh, record in um, like, what is it? 32, 352.8? Yes, 32 I, bit float and 352.8 kilohertz. Well, I mean, it's it's uh, actually fairly simple. If you if you think you have 44, 1,000 pictures per minute, I mean, audio pictures per minute, or 352,000, then you just get ever much so closer to your analog ideal. And then if you have a signal that is uh, split up in two by the power of 16 or two by the power of 32, then you also get a finer grain. I think I think you can basically, if you've ever seen an 8K picture, I mean, here it's now 4K is standard, but the Japanese had, or 15 years ago, they already had um, 
mm -hmm. 8K. And once I've, saw, I've seen my first 8K picture, I thought, oh, I don't need glasses anymore. I don't <laughs> see it. It's great. Uh, and and it's it's the same thing. And you just get better picture. The 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 back, I mean, the 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 back side of it though is, you get everything in really great resolution. And if it's not great, you hear it. So 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 I mean, you need Patricia Barber and you need her piano and you need her playing, to say, okay, I want this in th I just want this in this kind of resolution. Because maybe somebody else is playing you wouldn't want in that resolution because you'd be like, ooh, this is not what I want. But here we had we have the artist, we have we have the technical, we had the the the, the, the team and and the um and the technical solution. So so everything came together uh, on this one because yeah, you you have to be careful. Also, if it's the same thing with immersive or or surround in stereo, you can hide things. In surround, it, it it gets very open, and in immersive, <laughs> it's very, very, very open. So, so you 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 really have to be uh, you have to make good choices, otherwise you'll be sorry. Right, <laughs> right. I, I tell people, uh, and tell me if you you guys agree with this this definition. Uh, high resolution is not big stuff; it's tiny stuff. It's like millions of tiny, tiny details that, when combined, it really does make quite a quite a difference would you would that would that fall in in the line with with uh with your definition well i think any good engineering is a matter of detail and so even you know we can make recordings at 44 one that really in fact cafe blue and you do a, has a 44 <laughs> one recording and so yeah. it was just again attention to detail i remember replacing a piece of wire back then that was a digital cable and the guys at the studio were saying you don't need that i said yes i do because i'm not going to get the full resolution uh, and they they to their benefit they took it down they measured it and they said you're right there is more bandwidth in this cable than what we had uh, and and that proved to to be the case and so again I that's you know. it's about the weakest link i mean you try to always raise the weakest link because the recording is only as good as the weakest link and if the weakest link uh, I mean, with the computers we have these days, the weakest link is 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 me or Jim. You know, we, we try to be the weakest link. So if we can get the noise floor down with exchanging power, I mean, that's easy. Then you just take different power cables, you take different power. You want better resolution, then you get a computer that can do better resolution. And at, th at this point, it's it's really computers can do anything. It's just if you cannot operate them. It's it's usually, the the the, 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 the it's always between the ears. The problem yes. is usually between the ears. And, I've got so and, much so to say about that, but I'm not right. because we are like we're really fastly running yeah. out of time. I want to bring AB on and then and then Patricia, but I, I want to have you guys back on and just to do like a hard tech talk. Uh, maybe you'll join me and and uh, you know in in a, in a show in the future, and we can talk a little more about. Uh, some of the finer technical aspects that we just simply don't have time to get into today. But thank you guys so much for your work on Click and all of the other albums that you've done for Patricia and, and also everything else, Jim, that you do. Uh, I really appreciate you being uh, the, giving your time to teach people important lessons about um, about sound and how to achieve great sound and what you should be listening for. So, you know, kudos to you, buddy. I'm going to I'm going to bring on someone that sort of works hand in hand with you guys. You know, once the product is finished um, and I've known her now passively, I think I've known AB for like maybe two years or so. It might be even longer than that. And she's always been just the nicest person, but she's she's a distributor that cares. I mean, it's we were talking about this yesterday and having someone in AB's uh, position that actually gives individual attention to their artists and treasures them for who they are and wants to get the very most out of every album. She's an incredible lady. Uh, and I'd like to introduce you now to AB Fine. How are you? Hi, Damon. Good. How are you? Thanks so much for being here. AB is uh, with Impex Records. I'm, I think I can do this. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> AB is uh, with Impex Records and just an incredible person. Thank you for being here. Uh, we for, don't typically have the, the label or the distributor on, but you're such a force. I wanted to, to have you on because you're not just that. You're actually part of the team. 
I am very fortunate to be part of this great team. I was really enjoying listening to Jim and Ulrike. I'm thinking, I want to hear more. You can cut me out a little so I can hear more of them. <laughs> well, you know, they are extremely interesting and yeah. uh, we're going to have them all back on a show because I want to, I want to, I want to get in, into some tech stuff. Maybe we can do this next show with like the studio or something and we can just have a great time together. I know that our audience would be, um, would be interested in it only because there's so much bad information out there right now. And I know you guys see it all the time, but let's just talk about you for just a second. And with Impex, what do you guys do that's, that's different than, than other, than other labels and other distributors? We are a, a, a small team, but we are strong um, in the team of the, the people that we work with, the artists that we collaborate with. And Impex is unique in the sense that we don't put out many releases, but we're, we hand select each title that we release, regardless if it's a new release or a reissue album. And, and you also are very uh, uh, picky about who you even will work with from what I understand. Yes, we, um, I like to work with artists that are like-minded, that we have the same, you know, similar visions, similar goals. So the workflow would be easy. The same with the team, whether it's the engineer, the manufacturer, the, the print house, the press house, you know, it, it's it's the team that makes the album successful. It's not one or, or the other. So we are picky with who we, who we work with and also we hand select each album because there are already a lot of music out there reissue or new release so i want to contribute to something where my um customers audience fans where they they feel proud of a, a product they own from impex and when they're in that music mood and they want to reach for something they enjoy over and over again that impex would be one of the titles they pick I don't want to put out a product that just sits on their shelf for the sake, you know, because they're collecting. I want them to be listening to the album. And and how was it working with the uh, Patricia Barber team? It's been an honor and it has been really, really exciting. I, I have, it's been, I can't try to think of anybody I've worked with that is in the same caliber as Jim and Arika. I've learned so much from them. I'm so thrilled to be part of their team. I, I remember sitting at Stout and Printing when I first, um, heard the sample track and I looked over at Robert and we were like, our jaws dropped. I said, okay, scrape me off. This is a winner. It's, it's <laughs> fantastic. Um, so I was really excited. Well, congratulations. And, uh, AB, keep up the great work. We need more people like you, Ro you. music lovers. We need music lovers in this industry and not just someone that's just diving for a dollar. Uh, we need real musicians uh, out there uh, and, and, and to be able to help them out. And, and I, I think you just do an incredible job of this. So thank you for everything that you do. And thank you for being with us. That it really means a lot. AB was AB is responsible actually for getting us the, uh, the um, couple of uh, giveaways that we're going to be doing. So we are going to be giving away a couple of the new, uh, album from Patricia, from Patricia Barber, and these are on multi-layer SACDs. So you get the um, a five point one copy. You get a uh, what's the resolution on the on the uh, high res copy, Jim and uh, Ulrike? It, it is DSD sixty four is the uh, stereo high definition layer and the five point one high definition layer, and it's an MQA CD layer. Great. So if so you we'll happen be... to have an MQA decoder, then you will actually go back to the 24 bit. Now, I think that 32 bit and 352.8 kilohertz. Yeah. Fantastic. So we'll be giving away a couple of those. And also with that, we'll be giving away a couple of six month subscriptions to CoBuzz. So enjoy. Um, and I think at this point, folks, I am going to bring the star of the show on. Uh, I'll say goodbye to uh, to AB. AB, thank you so much for being here. Thank and, you for having uh, us. We will be talking very soon, you and I. Yes. Take care. Thank you. Bye. So, uh, uh, guys, we're going to go ahead and bring Patricia on. 
uh, stand by because there's a real good chance that that I'll I'll get you guys to 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 come back on uh, uh, while Patricia is on if there's if there's something that te technical or we think that we need you again. But uh, thank you very much for being here and taking your time. It's it's been an honor talking to you, and I look forward to uh, seeing you when I get to New York. Great, thanks, David. Let us know, you know thank anytime you. you want us to help you out here. Thanks so much, buddy. Yeah. Uh, take care, and we will see you in just uh, just a few minutes. And now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you. If you you probably haven't met her, uh, but what an incredible lady! Uh, I've been a fan for I guess ever since she started. Um, and I know a lot of people on CoBuzz are huge fans because a lot of people love great recordings. Um, she not only has great recordings, she's also deep. Uh, this is not a shallow lady. Um, and I think she does everything in her life for specific reasons. Um, we had a, a chance to talk yesterday and I found her extremely interesting and thoughtful. Um, not a lot of hype just she is who she is and it's it's uh I'm, I'm really glad to introduce everyone now to the one and only patricia barber hi Hello. hi david thanks for having me Hello, thank you everybody. so much for taking your time Absolutely. it's really nice having you on uh, on the screen and you know i was we were talking yesterday we're probably going to end up going over an hour because I'm not real good at keeping on time because I will hop on into a rabbit hole faster than a rabbit. So uh, we want to know a little, little more about you. You, you really are the reason for the show. And this new album that you have got, click, unbelievable. It's, it's so good. It's just as good as everything you've ever done. Every song. There's not a. There, a lot of times we'll have people um, talk about. Oh, uh, you know, what are the albums that you know of that you can listen to every single song back to back without having to skip? And you, all your albums are like that. Click is no different. Well, that's that's a huge compliment. Thank you so much. Well, no, and, thank uh, you. <laughs> I, somebody said, uh, you know, in France, they're going to call it Clique. In, in the United States, you're, you're, you know, you can call it Click. So it's either one. Our company is from France, and we talk to these guys, uh, you know, weekly. And you're absolutely right. That is exactly what they say. Uh, that was one of the things that they said that I can actually understand. Uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, right. you're right. Well, you have had quite a well, you've had quite an interesting career. Starting yes, like, I have starting like <laughs> way way early. Like, you, well. You, what I consider myself a late, a late beginner. Um, really, you started what? I, from well, you were asking read, you about like your piano at like five years old, right? Well, that's true. That's true. Of course, I mean most musicians, professional musicians, started when they were five years old. Um, but Distortion of Love was in 1992. I thought so. Yeah, and that's yeah. The album I did by myself with Bill Bradley at Universal Studios in Chicago was called Split. And that's my actual first album. And then I met Jim and that was a pure, well, it was a pure accident for me. I obviously Brian Beck has had some idea about it. Uh, and uh, I didn't know anything about recording, you know, very much. Bill Bradley did everything for Split. And then uh, I think I said to Jim, I'm gonna go out to lunch now. Would you like to come to lunch? And he said, no, I think I'll just stay here and, and mix. And I'm like, oh, okay, right? Not knowing that most musicians sit and talk about the hi-hat sound. And then they talk about the, the bass drum sound. And actually, I hate to say it, but the studio milks a lot of money out of them that way. And I, I didn't even know it, but Jim Anderson was doing all the mixing for me. And he would send me copy and I would say, could you pull up the voice here? Could you do this? Could you? But a little bit, I had a few suggestions, but basically I didn't do the mixing. Yeah, it's it's so wonderful. Uh, I was talking to this uh, to Jim uh, when we were first uh, when we were first getting to know each other, and um, this really it is a team effort. And what I said to Jim uh, about you was that Patricia is extremely lucky to have found you. 
uh, because you never know what you're going to get. I mean, you really don't. As an artist, you should be an artist. I want you to know how, if you're a, if you're a painter, I don't care if you know about the business end of things or, or, or technically what happens once you finish your, your painting. I, I want you to be all consumed in that. And as an artist, that's, that's a wonderful thing. If you have someone that you can trust to the degree that you trust Jim uh, and Ulrika at this point um, and not have to worry about it. it is don't sweat the small stuff when you don't have to. Thank God you've got a brilliant engineering team and you can worry about the things that you do the very best playing your piano and your voice, that voice, <laughs> that sultry jazz fat voice you've got. It's just so, it's so sweet. And you know, one thing I've noticed about your voice over the years, it, it doesn't change. It's, it's to me, it sounds the same. It's like you're, you're young. You're, you stay young. Your voice doesn't get old. I don't know. Do you do exercises to prevent that from happening or is it just, just your voice? Well, I, I've always done vocal exercises, uh, you know, and Renee Fleming taught me a new one with a straw, which is very important to straighten out your vocal cords. I what always steamed. Well, you sing through a straw basically. Oh, really? Basically. Yeah. And so you can, as she says, you can stop people in the hotel from complaining because it really, it's a, it's a light sound and you're warming up your voice and it straightens out your vocal cords. So it was interesting. I, I love cafes. So in Chicago, I would go to a cafe every day and get a newspaper and an espresso and sit down and you have Chicago actors from the Shakespeare theater. And I had King Lear, who's one of my friends uh, there. He was losing his voice. And I said, do you know about the straw? And he said, no, no, no. And I told him, you know, I taught him what Renee had taught me. And he, it worked for him. He kept the role. He kept his voice strong. And he taught it to all the actors. So now I think it's pretty much around the world. But I still, I still teach people. Uh, so that's one thing. But I also steam because I have asthma and mucus. And singers talk about mucus more than they talk about anything else, by the way. <laughs> they do. Well, whatever you're doing, keep mm -hmm. doing it. It's working. It sound your your voice still sounds as strong as beautiful and beautiful as it's ever sounded. So how about click? I mean, was it fun working on? I don't even really want to get into that now. What I'd really like to do before we get into click, because we've got so many, you would not believe how many phone calls and emails and communications I've had over the last week with people going, you've got Patricia on. I, I can't wait to to meet her. Uh, because just so many of your fans, they don't know you, not face to face like this. So I look at this as a super privilege and really would like to get to know you or get our audience to know you just a little better. And, you know, what you've been through, how you how you even started in, in this whole crazy business that's not very smart to start in to begin with. Um, you're apparently an intellectual. <laughs> I mean, you could have done a lot of things. You could have been teaching or you could have been doing you know, whatever. You could have been doing a lot of different things. Um, so let's kind of talk about the early years. What made you decide? What was that? There's usually something in a musician's life. At, at some point, something clicks and goes, this is what I want to do. I knew what I wanted to do from the time I was five years old. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I wanted to get to Chicago. I didn't know about New York. I didn't think about New York. Uh, but I, cause I was in Chicago and, uh, my father had been a musician, uh, played with Glenn Miller. They were friends. And then he became a pharmacist to support his family, but he taught me the piano at five and, you know, musical talent in families is endowed, you know, selectively. My two sisters were given piano lessons. I was younger than they were, but I could hear that they, it didn't take, I could hear that it wasn't working for them. <laughs> and, but I just could play whatever I heard. So um, I could play any instrument and I did during high school. I played all the instruments and um, I just always knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a musician. Sometimes I wanted to be an arranger like Neil Hefty or Vince Mendoza. Sometimes I wanted, to, I was a, a very good saxophonist. Uh, I was a very good drummer. Um, really? And I always... I always wanted I didn't know to get any Chicago. of this. I thought it was just only like piano. Yeah, but you no. played all of these things. That's incredible. I can play guitar. 
I always just wanted to get to Chicago and and uh, and be a nightclub singer. And um, and then once I got to Chicago, I I didn't feel the need to leave Chicago because by then I could already see that that plane from Chicago would go is anywhere the same way it would in New York. <laughs> so um, I stayed in Chicago, but I, I you know I got so outside of Chicago and got around the world quite a bit. So you started about, about what age did you start as a nightclub singer? Your dream, your dream job of a nightclub singer. I'm sure your mom and dad were like going, Oh yeah, Patricia, yeah, you gotta do that. <laughs> yeah, no, my mother cried when I told her what I was gonna do. She cried on the phone. And then and then she became my biggest fan for years and years and years, and she would be at all my gigs. Um, but you know, about 22 years old, I came to Chicago and I just got killed. You know, I just, I, I paid my dues in, in a very big way. And then about three years later, I finally broke through into the city and I got a great uh, trio gig at the Western Hotel. And from that point on, I never stopped working until the pandemic. And I'm guessing during the pandemic, it's, excuse me, during the pandemic, I'm guessing you were still working actually. Well, I'm working, but I'm not working in public. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just different, right? It's become, it was a, it was a it was a period of, I think, learning and rediscovering, and um, I I know on my side reflection that you know you just I've been so busy for you know the last few decades just you know trying to raise a family and making it and uh, just busy just doing stuff you know every single day that I that I it was kind of I I didn't realize how much. I hadn't self-reflected over the last uh, few decades. And, and it was really nice being here uh, and having the time to actually do it. So the pandemic wasn't fun, I don't think, for anybody. But I think it was beneficial it for a lot of us. Still, we're still in the middle of it. Yeah, sure. But the thing is, is I think we've all learned uh, maybe a little more about ourselves and a little bit right. more about uh, mm -hmm. how to deal with... Uh, yeah, the adversity that we've just been going through. Right. Right. So, so I'm guessing you were getting up every day playing your piano. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of writing though, too. So tell writing, me what you, there, let's, let's talk about that just for a second. I, this would be kind of a general question, but I'm, I'm going to go kind of for the, for the, for the pandemic. What, what's a day in the, what's a day in the life look like for you? What do you do? You know, you get up at three 30 in the morning and, feed the chickens. And then what do you do after that? <laughs> well, it's not all that different, except that my uh, over 30 years of being on the road, I have a, a jazz musician schedule. So I get up, I used to go to bed at 3 a.m. and get up at 11 about, but now it's starting, it's starting to move toward 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., 2 a.m. to 10. But, um, yeah, we're out in Michigan, so I had to take care of uh, a lot of things. I my my upper body strength has grown. I I we uh, don't have central heat, so I bring in wood that's chopped and brought to the house. And so when you if you can survive a Michigan winter with your wood and a, a small propane heater, then you're doing pretty well. But survival, we have a huge uh, twenty acre forest. We're in the middle of a forest. Really? Um, so, mm -hmm. so there's a lot more hands-on work out here than there is in this beautiful house we have in Chicago. Um, you know, so I was but it's really been, teasing. I was not, I was kidding I, about the chickens. So that's I was what thinking. I said. I mean, you're not too far away from the truth. I really have to get out every day and fix things and do things. And I have a friend who's just a cornfield away, uh, Keith, who does a lot of the handiwork. But every time he does it, he has he has to teach me what he's doing. So like, he'll, he'll be like, okay, I'm going to put the tractor on the flatbed. Now, do you want to watch? And I'm like, yes, I want to watch, you know? So, uh, yeah, so it's been, it's been like that. And then yes, I play the piano, but I don't differently from before. I am not, I am not driven with a project. I'm also writing prose. I'm sorry, you're writing so, what? Prose. Prose, uh, as opposed to poetry, prose. So prose has many, many more words, and it's a whole different animal. So I've been writing prose, and that's been wonderful because I can explain better about music. 
and other things too, you know, love and loss and, and sex and, uh, you know, all kinds of things. I'm writing short stories. I can also write a book, a bit of a memoir. Um, and, you know, we got off the plane after a year and a half of touring for hire, which is the really the complimentary album to click hire, which is original material. And by the way, you can go to patriciabarber.com and actually buy this uh, album. Uh, going over there, uh, right? If you're not going to go now, which don't leave now, wait till wait till we're finished. But uh, when you finish with that, go to patriciabarber.com and 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 order a order a copy of that. I know she would uh, appreciate it, and I know you would enjoy it. So, yeah. So we got off the plane February twenty eighth, twenty twenty. So we knew that there was a virus, and we were trying to stay clean on the planes, but musicians fly every day, if not every day, every other day. So right. it was really hard. Um, and at the end, February 28th, we were happy to get off. And I, as Renee Fleming says, we were all happy to have a rest because you don't rest. You know, you, you do a record, you do a tour, you do a record, you do a tour. You know, you miss so much of other things. Right. You know, because if you want to be at the top of your game in anything, in anything really, it's just incredibly time consuming. Um, so yes, the pandemic was a welcome opportunity to reflect uh, on a lot of things. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. You know, if you're if you're going to be on the top of your game, uh, I think another aspect of that, if you're really going to be on top of your game, you have to love what you're doing. You just oh, have to course. love it, right? I mean, it's something that's that comes from the heart. The people that do it for a paycheck, I think, last a few years, and then then, then they just go away. Uh, but the people that are hardcore, that have got this so entrenched in their heart, in their mind, you can't go away. There's no way to go away. You could be making more money doing something else, but there's really just no way to just go away. It's It's... It's too much a part of you. Yeah, although although I, I do know musicians who are going away. <laughs> no. Yeah, so do I. So do I. I actually I. do. I mean, I'm really sorry. Really good musicians. I know great musicians who are disappearing, who are leaving, great composers who are leaving, and you will never hear their music. And I know young musicians that are leaving because there's no financial compensation. And there certainly has we changed. won't hear their music. Yeah, that that is absolutely a, a that's that's horrible uh, because it it has changed like uh, 180 percent since uh, you know even 15 20 years ago. It's 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 totally different now, and it is so much harder or different to make uh, to make it as a as a musician. It's always been hard. Um, I mean, out of all the people that I've been associated with growing up my life that have all been musicians. A few of them have made it. So, and they're not even necessarily the very best ones. They're the ones that were a little smarter or worked a little differently um, and figured out how to make it work. We were talking about this not, not long ago. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of this book that was written in the eighties called who moved my cheese. Uh, and the, 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 it should be no surprise to anyone that everyone's cheese gets moved and and we have to figure out ways to do things differently to 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 make up for that or to find our cheese as it as it were um so i i i definitely feel for you that way that's one of the reasons that we've got the download store we we want musicians to make money and we encourage people to uh to buy that, even if it's not from us, just like we were talking a little while ago, go to Patricia's site, buy her music. That's not going to hurt us one little bit. And if it would help you one little bit, it's worth, it's worth it all. So uh, yeah, we're, we're big proponents of that, but I think we're in a, we're in a, um, a transitionary period right now. Yeah, sure. So, uh -huh. so, I think things will change at some point. I do too. I think that, uh, yeah, uh, I think it has to change because as Maria Schneider says, it's unsustainable. There is no musician who can save up money based on streaming 
to make another album. Ah, so, so it's unsustainable. Unreal. It's just unsustainable. So something has to change. Well, the, the the thing I think that has to change is people have got to start talking about r the real issues. I mean, we can, you know, you can point fingers any any day of the week, but until real issues are, are uh, determined and agreed upon, um, it's just talk. So there's there's got to be a way that we can get people. I know big fans of Cobuzz, they talk downloads. A lot of these guys are buying things, not necessarily because they're collectors, because we've simply asked them to. And I think if we have more and more people that are aware and that will just ask, then then people will start doing this. I think in, in, in general, people have got a good heart and they're typically good natured. It's it's like when we go to a concert, Patricia. I won't go to a concert without buying a T-shirt or an album or something. Not necessarily because I'm going to really use it a lot, but it's such a great way to help support the arts. And that's exactly what you are. You are the arts. So it's important that we support the all aspects of the arts but right now for this particular discussion uh support your favorite artists folks it's it's they need it this pandemic has been going on and it's not really letting up right this right this second uh so go buy you know go buy some stuff um i know they would appreciate it so tell me patricia early on um who who were some of your influences who did you listen to when you were a child and went and that that you know, it's just like I gave you goosebumps. Was it was it well, a classical piece? Was it a was it a someone speaking, uh, uh, singing? What what was it? Well, you know, I think kids grow up with their parents' music, right? So I grew up with Billy Holiday. My mother loved Billy Holiday. My father had been a jazz musician. So what was playing in the house were you know Peggy Lee, uh, Nancy Wilson, Miles Davis. Billie Holiday, uh, she just loved Billie Holiday. My mother had a great voice. She was a great singer. She sounded like Mahalia Jackson, actually. Really? Yeah, really. So not, uh, not like your voice. No, not at all. Not not even close. You know? Wow. Um, so Did that's you guys ever sing together? With, oh, all the time. You know, yeah, I like that. Did you ever like she comes life. to your? Did she ever come huge to one of your gigs? You went. Oh, did did you time. ever come to one of your sing. gigs and you go, Mom, come on up, let's do this number together? No, no. Okay, no, I was because, just wondering. <laughs> because the one thing she didn't know about was key. So, you know, she could switch in the bridge to another key and it would be like, oh, no. But um, so that's what I grew up with, not really caring about the Beatles, not really caring, definitely not caring about the Rolling Stones. I love Motown. Um, Me too. <laughs> And Judy Garland of all of all people, Judy Garland. I know every line, every word, every breath, every blow. She blew the lyrics all the time, but she just kept going. And I forgot the gold iron words, you know. Um, what so voice. that's what I that's what I loved. I loved Janis Joplin. I thought she was fabulous. Um, you know, and so so that's what I grew up with. I didn't really know about classical music because I lived in basically Sioux City, Iowa, and they had. The only time we heard classical music was at an outdoor, they had a music shell and we were way, way, way back and we were having a picnic and I didn't know. And so it was when I met my wife, Martha, who is a professor of music at the University of Chicago, I started learning about classical music really late in life and that was, oh. is so interesting. Yeah. And she started learning about jazz. So that was an interesting complimentary thing. Well, that is absolutely fascinating. Okay, got it. I gotta, I gotta yeah. know. What, let's see, I think you and I are about the same age. Uh, what, I, I remember distinctly what we were listening to, what we were listening on when I was a kid. What were you listening on? Well, the first thing I remember loving, well, we were listening on LP. Uh, right, you know. but it's like, was it a Victrola? Was it like a console? No, we had these console, remember those? We had these big oh, console yeah. hi-fi. right that would drop the album and the thing, you know, that's what we were listening on. Right. And then the yeah. first, the first hip thing was the Sony Walkman. That was a tape recorder. It was a big thick thing and it was a tape recorder. And that 
for me was huge. I had that on my head all the time. And at that point I was listening to Brazilian music all the time. And I could sing, it also had a recorder, so I would sing into the mic and I would listen to it back and go, ooh, that's awful. And I would start again and that's par hard, partly how I listened and learned. This is how I knew that I couldn't sing because before we got a tape recorder, I actually thought I could sing and I would <laughs> sing all the time. I mean, and, and really loud. Uh, it, but then we got the, the tape recorder. I, I still remember when mom and dad got me this little cheap, you know, just a little box tape recorder that you yeah, this right. prior to the yeah. this way before the Walkman, but you yeah. press the record yeah. and yeah. so I would play the push the record and think about that bad yeah. i'm thinking man this is going to sound great and then i then i you know played it back and i'm right. who's who is that <laughs> this is horrible i used to tell my students to tape themselves first of all tape yourself sing tape yourself sing tape yourself you know get rid of what you don't like and keep what you like yeah yeah that's yeah. that's probably that's probably a uh, uh, good advice if you had anything that you liked at all. Mm -hmm. uh, mine was uh, I didn't like anything that I had at all. So I'm going, okay, I better do something else. So, so I started playing guitar and drums. And so yeah. that's pretty much what I've done, you know, pretty much my whole life. Um, well, gosh, what, what are you, what are you working on now? Are you still just, uh, you, you're still just sort of in the aftermath of click. I mean, you still got a lot to do with that. I'm guessing, when the pandemic, uh, when you can start traveling again, when you can start touring again, you will tour on click. Is that correct? Who knows? Do you yeah. know? Yeah. No. Nah. Nobody knows. Hold on. Let me get my crystal ball out. I've, I've got yeah. one right. I know musicians that are booking gigs and then they have, they have this awful in-between world where people don't come to the gigs because they don't want to sit so close to other people. Singers are supposed. Singers need to wear masks in Illinois. You need to be wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. So, if all the other musicians in the audience, you know, if you don't have a vax check at the door and you're taking in these big breaths, you know, so much exposure to the Delta variant is going to break through that immune system. And so, I don't know what to do. I don't. So when people ask me what I'm going to do, I just have to say I don't know. We did. Yeah. We had a concert scheduled. A benefit concert for a small music school up out here in Michigan, and uh, we had to cancel it because I didn't feel good about asking audience members to come in and sit so close to each other. I'm that's far away thoughtful. from them, but they're not far away from each other. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. very thoughtful uh, because I know you could use you could use the the gigs. I mean, it's well, it's not that was a benefit. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 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 Well, hopefully, hopefully by next year sometime, we'll be able to start seeing you live again. I would love to come and see you. I've never, I've, I've actually never seen you live. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll, I'll be able to sing all the words along with you. You you may not want me to, but I would be able, I would actually be able to, maybe I'll just lip the words and, and, you know, <laughs> higher, and higher it. and click are very extremely representative of what we were playing in 2019. If you came to any of our concerts in Paris or Sweden or Budapest, that's, you know, you would hear that group playing this music. So, yeah. And the next time you're in Paris, you're going to have to let me know. You got to give me plenty of, you got to give me plenty of, uh, of notice because I've got about 50 people at Cobuzz that we yeah. would like to, that would like to come over and see. That's where our big team is. That's where, you know, the main stuff happens. Mm -hmm. And man, what a fascinating place. Yeah. I'm guessing yeah, we're, you kind of like Paris a little bit. Oh, I love Paris, and and we play in Paris. Paris is our biggest, uh, um, our biggest market outside of the United States. For sure. Wow, is it really? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh wow, I would. I I never even. I never thought that. I would. And they know my lyrics, even though they're in English, because number one, they know English, but number yeah. two, they're just great fans. You know, wow. so I'll start singing uh, a song I wrote and like snow or something that's becoming a classic and they'll start singing it with me it's just unbelievable really remarkable that's yeah. that, that that's fantastic yeah. yeah well it's uh maybe i think i think a, a good cold buzz trip would be you know going okay well let's see when patricia is playing and then we can do a company event oh, and we fun. can just kind of make it uh make it part of that but uh yeah i would i would love to I would love to see you in person if we ever get to do that again. Um, and I know the people that have seen you in person 
always enjoy it. It's fun watching some of your stuff on YouTube uh, because you just really kind of get a feel of the audience, what they expect. And I got to tell you, I love seeing you on stage and the way that you interact with your audience and maybe teach them a little lesson here and there and, and talk about social issues a little bit. And, and then your voice, I think it just all goes together so well. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, we have, uh, we, we've gone way past time. Mm -hmm. It's already like five ten. Um, I knew that you and I, cause I've got about 15 more questions for you that, that I wasn't able to get to, but I'd love to have you back again. Uh, perhaps when you start touring again, you'll, you'll grace us with your, with your presence. I want to bring back in the other folks, uh, real quick to say, uh, Goodbye to everyone, but Patricia, thank you so much for joining us. I, You're I, welcome, David, and thanks for having us. Yeah, it was. A, it, I got to tell you, on my side, I was telling uh, Abby and um, Taylor when we were putting this whole thing together that this is going to be more fun for me than than anyone. It's it's quite an honor to 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 be speaking with you and 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 get a little bit of background, and I hope everyone. Uh, who's listening, um, enjoyed getting to know Patricia uh, a little better. Throughout the weeks and months and years, this video or this uh, this live stream will be watched time and time again. It doesn't go away. So, oh, great. Uh, yeah, so it'll it'll great. be around. It's on Cobuzz and uh, uh, YouTube and um, lots and lots of social, uh, lots of social. So, uh once again, go buy Patricia's album. You'll love it and listen to it on Cobuzz and go, can you believe what that sounded like? So we're going to bring back on Jim. Hello, Jim. Hi, gonna David. Bring back Ulrika. Hello, Ulrika. Hello. How are you? And then last but not least, our friend. Amy's still in the hotel room. <laughs> I'm still in the hotel room with my uh, lampshade hat. <laughs> oh, I like the lampshade hat. If I can close it, so it's not so bright. Oh, <laughs> uh, which is fine. So uh, we're we're gonna kind of wrap up now, guys. And and this is the first time I've ever had four people simult simultaneously on the show. So I apologize if I spent too much time on one thing and not enough on another. But I knew that I could have a show with every single person here. I, really, every single person here, we could have done an hour uh, hour show. So I want to I'm gonna get all of you guys to, to come back on the show. But I think next time maybe uh, we will have, you know, Jim and then, then AB. And then the next time we do Patricia, uh, we're just going to do Patricia um, and, and, and just kind of keep it separate because everybody's got such great stories. Uh, and I've loved, I've, I've loved hearing every one of them. So thank you so much for joining us guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, so much. Thanks David. You're welcome. Thank you. Er Everyone, uh, thank you for joining uh, Cobus Live, and we hope you're here for uh, next week's event, and we'll be putting that up soon. Um, listen to Patricia Barber's new album, Click, and then when you love it as much as uh, I do, go buy it. Uh, please listen to Jim's uh, playlist. It's, it's, it's featured on our Hi-Fi partners right now with this little logo on there. So if you guys will go to, uh, to Cobus, if you're, if you're members, um, listen to this, uh, listen to this playlist. It's fascinating because, uh, Jim and Ulrika have, have got a hand in a lot uh, in every single one of these recordings. And you could just get an idea of the technical expertise. These, these folks bring to the table. Uh, please go to Impact Record. Check those guys out. AB would really much appreciate it. And she's got some awesome, awesome recordings there. Uh, so, folks, once again, thank you all for joining. We appreciate you being here. And I wish you and very, very well during the rest of the pandemic. Thank you, David. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.